Uh, what a better way to spend this wonderful Saturday. Actually, uh, guys, admittedly, I'm filming this on Friday night, but either way, you're watching it on Saturday. Either way, I mean, what, what better way to spend this time than to make a video going over the overall stock market and how it's been doing over the past couple of days? We'll break down, I mean, a bunch of time frames here on Thinkorswim, but we'll talk a lot about what happened in the past week, two weeks. So if you all find value, hit that like button, make sure to subscribe, and don't forget to get up to 15 stocks for Moomoo. We'll link down below if you like free money if you don't like free money ignore that and now let's talk about what's going on here in the market so you guys probably remember it was just two days ago i mean if you forgot this by now i don't know what to tell you but two days ago we had the fed meeting where we got news that we're getting another 25 basis point rate hike the uh, the fed funds rates going from five to five and a quarter and we also got news that well the uh the inflation rate might stay higher longer than expected and well they're not going to uh, cut rates just like that they don't want to prematurely cut rates and guess what the stock market did not like that at all we had a huge dump on wednesday this thing went and, and by this thing i mean spy which tracks the s p 500 this went from 413 down all the way to 405 in the aftermarket and that you know 415 level more like 413 uh 413 that was hit right around 240 right as the press conference started with mr jerome powell and again it went all the way down to 405 so that was a drop of around two percent in other words right around eight and a half bucks and and you guys can see here it bled on Thursday as well. Let me pop up the five day. Hold on a second, guys. Uh, you can see on Wednesday it hit roughly again, like I said, four or five in the aftermarket. On Thursday it hit 403.74, which was a drop of around ten dollars from where it was as Jerome Powell started speaking. So that was a, a big drop in the S&P 500, right? And Triple Q, which tracks the Nasdaq 100, saw a very similar drop. I mean, it saw a big drop on Wednesday. It Bled even more after the bell. Thursday, it ended up taking the lows out from Wednesday. Then today, you guys can see this is why you have to be patient and you guys have to not let the stock market trick you out of your positions because look, it recently just went up a ton. On Friday, it went up over 2%, guys, and we pretty much you know, got back that entire loss here on the NASDAQ. We lost a bunch. We went from 322 down to 315, but now this thing went up to 323 yesterday on Friday, guys. This was a crazy move on Triple Q, and SPY did the same thing pretty much, I believe. I think it retraced or uh, regained, rather, the entire loss. Yep, it dropped from 413 down to 403, and it went all the way back up to 412. That is a very big move. And again, why you have to be patient, especially if you're short-term trading, because a lot of the time the market tries to swing out a lot of people uh you know a lot of people out of their positions and if you just hold and be patient if you're it depends on what kind of trading you're doing but let's say you're short term swing trading or whatever a lot of people would have got spooked out but if you just hold and be patient you can you could be surprised with the stock market ends up doing so we got a big pop on spy and on the uh, on the nasdaq and on the 20-day chart on these two guys we can see we're not quite yet breaking out sure we're above the uh the moving averages here but we're still not above the highs from april and from uh you know the beginning of this month of may being around 413 415 you guys can see even up to 417 that's a big spot of uh, resistance on spy so this needs to break out a 417 and if it starts to do that like i've said time and time again here on the channel you guys can see on the four hour chart here if we start breaking 417 in my opinion we could see this ascending triangle that's clear clear as day on the four hour chart we could see it play out and we can start moving towards the highs from back in august if i pull the yearly chart up you guys will see back in august we hit roughly 430 that would be the next target in my opinion that spy could go to and now that i'm looking at this before August, we failed at 417.18, pretty much where we are now. Uh, we, we failed back then as well. So this is a very prominent resistance, and I'm telling you guys, bulls could take this thing a lot higher if we break 417. That's just based on the charts and, of course, my opinion. And let's see Triple Q on this yearly chart and see what that is is looking like bear with me here guys look this has an ascending triangle clear as day as well where uh, we're seeing that play out and if we break 322 on that thing 
this could see a move towards the highs from back in August, which in triple uh, triple Q's case, it you know those highs were right around where were they 335. That's where it could be going initially. That could be a move of around you know 10 12 dollars or around three three and a half percent. I'm not saying for sure this will happen, but it's definitely in the cards. And you and you guys have seen triple Q get really hot. If we have one of those days where it just blows up, it could go up three three and a half percent in a day. I mean we've seen that happen before. I'm not calling for that. You'd be surprised how quick it, it could make that move. At least in my opinion. We'll see how it goes. Guys guys, but overall, I'm telling you, if Triple Q breaks 322, where it is right now, and it's been struggling for the last couple of weeks, there's going to be a breakout on this ETF, no doubt in my mind. We're seeing the starts of it today. We went up to 322. Now, we actually close almost at 323. We're on the verge of breaking out on that. So let's pull up crude oil and see what it's doing. But before we do that, if you have not gotten up to 15 stocks yet for Moomoo, it is free money. Use that link down below. Open up an account. You get one free share of stock right off the bat. And if you deposit at least 100 bucks, you get four more stocks totaling five stocks. And listen to this, guys. If you deposit at least 1000 bucks, you get another 10 stocks totaling 15 free stocks. So if you want some free money, which who doesn't like free money, and you also want to help out the channel, use that Moomoo link down below. It's greatly appreciated. And with that being said, Let's continue. So oil's not looking so pretty, guys. This thing has been falling through the floor. My goodness, this thing has been all over the place. So oil a couple of weeks ago, you guys probably remember, maybe not, but in the end of March, it was at what, 64 a barrel? And then it climbed all the way up to about 83 a barrel as we got news that, you know, Saudi Arabia is going to start cutting production. I think it was by 1 billion, not billion, a uh, million barrels of oil per day, maybe a little bit more than that. That was a couple weeks ago. We saw that huge run in oil, now those gains have been erased. And I haven't been paying too much attention on the fundamental side of what's really going on with oil. Um, you know, sure, we got that news from Saudi Arabia, but I haven't, you know, kept up with it since then. Might have to do some reading, catching up on the uh, on the oil side of things. I, I've been kind of uh, neglecting that market recently. But uh, you can see it erased all the gains. So something's got to be going on here. It went from 83 all the way down to 63 a barrel earlier this week, guys. That was an insane move to the downside. Let me actually see if it hit that or was that a glitch in the system? Sometimes it glitches, guys. You know what I mean, right? Nope, it did. It hit $63 per barrel. That was on the 3rd of May. That is just insane. Talk about volatility. I mean, this thing's swinging 25, 30, 35%. Like, it's nothing. And now it's looking very bearish if we're looking at it from a technical perspective. Now that we're falling under 72 a barrel, we hit 63 a barrel, which took the low out from, you know, the end of uh, March. That is not good at all here for oil, and maybe we get another relief rally because it's so oversold. I don't know, but either way, what I do know is we're under the moving averages. We have a death cross here. You guys see that? That's not a good sign at all for the bulls. And if I pull up gold, let me see what gold's looking like and silver, then we'll wrap up the video. Gold's looking extraordinarily bullish right now, at least in my opinion. I mean, it's not even an opinion. It's a fact. Look, on the four-hour chart, we just hit a fresh high at 2085 announced this week. And you guys remember the all-time high? Well, it was right around that point from back when we, uh, I think that was when Russia invaded, right? Actually, no, that was during that time period, it was um, roughly 2075 announced. And back in 2020, that's when it hit the peak of 2089. So we're now, well, we were about $4 or $5 off that all-time high. Now gold's at what, 2024? So it's down, it went down 1.5% yesterday, down over 30 bucks an ounce. So it is selling off a little bit it, because honestly, it was overbought. It was due for a pullback. And by the looks of it, we're still holding the uptrend, right? We're still holding a higher low here on gold. So in my eyes, this is very bullish. We could be at all-time highs in no time. If I had to bet, if I had to guess, which I actually own gold. So, I mean, I have money at stake here, which I'm not going to sell my gold. I don't plan on ever selling it. I'm kind of a nerd. I have some coins, guys, and I have a little gold collection. I'm not planning on selling it because I think it's kind of cool to have. And, of course, there's value in it. It holds its value over time. But overall, I think it's going to break out. And, uh, well, I'm riding with it because, again, I, I own 
a, a decent chunk of gold there. So look, we have that move to 2085. We had that move, and I think we're going to retest that point very soon here. Maybe not next week. Maybe not the week after. I, I don't know. I could be wrong, but I think gold's going to test that and hit an all-time high, which would be awesome, uh, of course, for the bulls. And who knows? Maybe at that point we really start hitting 2500. I think that is a good target, at least in my opinion. I've done some research. You know, of course, I'm not a gold bug, but I, I do, uh, you know, dig, dig deeper into it. And there's a lot of people out there, smart people thinking gold 2500 an ounce, 3000 an ounce. And I tend to agree with that. This has been a range where gold's been trading with them for three years at this point. And you can see it's been trading here literally since July of 2020. That's almost three years ago, guys. And at some point, we are going to either break down, which clearly gold did not want to do that. We held the bottom of the channel like clockwork. That that was back in October. Now we're clearly uh, well off that. We you know bounced and took the moving averages out. This looks like it wants to break out to the upside. We just have to wait for that breakout. Once, in my opinion, once we start going over 2,100 an ounce, it is going to turn up for the Bulls. The heat's going to turn up, and I think we're going to go up a lot more from there. Who knows? I could be wrong, but that's my opinion. So I'm going to set my alert at 2100 an ounce here on gold, and we'll see how it goes. Now let's take a look at silver, guys, which has been doing very well recently as well. It was at, what, 1750 back in August. Now it's at 25 almost 26 bucks an ounce. It is up 50% since last August, and now we're approaching a big resistance on silver and mine you this is the three-year chart so keep that in mind we are at 2650 ish well we're not there now but we're in that you know general vicinity and and that that was resistance back in march of 2022 so if we push through this 2650 level in my opinion we're probably going to go towards that 30 mark which i've been saying for a while and it's taken a while i think it'll happen eventually but i've been saying that 30 plus an ounce silver is in the cards and i don't personally own any silver over right now i might buy some i don't know i mean I, I feel like if i were to buy some i should have bought it back in the 17 18 an ounce range uh but overall you know i'm not against it but i'm more for gold right i think both metals are great you know ha having some diversity i probably should buy some silver uh but i'm i'm in gold right and i was buying gold probably in the uh 13 14 hundred an ounce you know 16 17 i don't know i don't know if i hit 1700 buys uh but you know i was buying coins coins all in that range. So I'm up a decent amount of my gold position, although I'm not selling it, like I said. Uh, but silver on the flip side, I might trade this thing. Honestly, this is something that I'm not in with physical silver, but I might trade it in the paper markets, which you can look at SLV for exactly that, which is simply a, an ETF that tracks silver. So this could do very well if silver goes to 30 an ounce. I mean, this could probably start uh, moving. Well, I mean, I don't know exactly, but maybe towards 30 bucks a share, you know, it's at 23.57. There could be a lot more upside. And if you want to trade gold in the paper markets, you can look at GLD. Let me pull that up and show you guys. GLD is simply a gold ETF, which tracks the price of gold. And honestly, these are great for short-term trading, GLD and SLV, or maybe even, you know, longer-term swing trading. But if you want to hold gold or silver for the long, long term for decades and decades and have it as a store of value, maybe pass some uh, down to your grandkids or whatever, having it in the physical form is no doubt 100% hands down the best way to do it. And I might make a gold, um, you know, a gold unveiling video, like what, what I have, some different coins and so forth. I'm not going to show you guys everything, but I'll show you some of my favorite coins I have um, and run through the collection to show you guys, you know, this is real money too. It's literally worth, you know, a bunch of money per ounce. And a lot of people look at it like, oh, it's uh, archaic, uh, whatever. It was from 3,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago. But it's a store of value, guys. And honestly, it's cool collecting, at least for me. And honestly, I want to pass it down one day. And I think it's I think it's just pretty cool. But either way, enough of that. Enough of that tangent. Maybe I'll make an unveiling video on my second channel, Stops Talks Money. Uh, shameless plug there, guys. Go down below and subscribe because not only am I going to make a gold video on that channel, I'm also going to do a $100 giveaway once we hit 1,000 subs. And, uh, well, we're getting, well, we're not really close, but we're at 370 subs, something like that. So we're 37% uh, 
10% of the way there. So go down below, subscribe to Stas Talks Money, hit that like button on this video, and subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to get up to 15 stocks from Moomoo and 12 stocks from Weeble. And to check out my Patreon, all those links are down below or on the side. I forget because now YouTube has this new update, which I hate, by the way, where the comment section is on the side. I mean, I guess you can sift through the comments while watching the video. And honestly, I'm kind of used to that old setup. So, you know, I'll probably get used to it. But it's, it's, it's throwing me off a little bit. Either way, get those free stocks. Check out the Patreon. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys later.